pruning tomatoes. It's one of those gardening topics that people get really riled up about. But I am here to tell you that there is no definitive right or wrong way to prune or train your tomatoes. Much like almost everything in gardening, it all comes down to personal preference, the area that you're gardening in, the type of tomato that you're growing, and just a process of trial and error to figure out what works best for you. Now, that being said, I'm going to show you today the system that I've figured out works the best for me and maybe you can draw some little tidbits from that for your own garden. So the first thing I want to mention is that this is how I prune and train indeterminate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes I do a little differently and I'm hoping to cover that in another video but this is specifically for indeterminate tomatoes. So my first step before anything even goes in the ground is to put up a cow panel trellis. Now the concept of the cow panel trellis is fairly simple. It's just driving three of these T-posts into the ground. I like to do two on the outsides, one directly in the middle, and then tethering the cow panel, and this is a 16 foot cow panel, to the T-post and doing it about two feet off the ground or so. I usually just eyeball it so it's, it's nothing exact. But these are quite heavy, so you really want to use something to secure this well. I usually strap it up with zip ties and then come back with thin pieces of metal and twist them on with a wrench or metal of uh, wire cutters or something. But anything that's going to keep that really secure because between the weight of these tomatoes once they're close to maturity and any like late summer storms that you get coming through, you really don't want to take a chance of this thing coming down. So after I get my trellis up, I will plant three indeterminate tomatoes per 16 foot trellis section, spacing them out evenly. And this is to ensure that they have plenty of room to grow and a lot of good air circulation. Now, when you transplant the tomatoes, they're typically not even tall enough to reach the bottom of the cowl panel. So I usually will put a little tiny bamboo post at the bottom, train them to that post, and then train them up the trellis as they grow. And you can see here, these tomatoes have been in the ground for since about the middle of May. So it's been about two months now. And they are already, well, this one's almost, it is over the top of the, of the panel. Now, once the plants are this size, there are two main things I'm focusing on, and that is both the pruning and the training. So as these branches grow, and while they're still supple, the easiest thing to do is just kind of weave them in between the squares of this cow paneling. And that will act as a natural support. But what can happen if you're kind of not out here every single day making sure that each new bit of growth is interwoven amongst these panels is you can have these crazy branches grow out and then there's really not a good way to weave them in without breaking them. So that is where my handy dandy Velcro tape comes in. And this stuff is just the greatest thing for trellising tomatoes. So all I'm gonna do is snip off a length, pin this up here someplace where it's out of the way of other branches and tape up that branch so that it stays secure. And I will just kind of continue to do that all over the plant until I feel like everything is pretty secure. Now, my main reasons for pruning are to keep the plants from becoming just totally unruly for improved air circulation and by improving air circulation, reducing some of the fungal and bacterial diseases that can happen with tomatoes, especially in a humid summer climate like we have here. So when I am pruning, I am really only looking at clearing out any branches or leaves that are touching the ground, and then anything that is really plugging up the center of the plant and not allowing for good air circulation, and then just any branches that are just growing totally wonky and I can't <laughs> I can't find a good place to train them. I will snip those off as well. So I'm gonna get in here at the bottom of this plant. And before I jump into pruning, the only th other thing I will mention is that I do like to sanitize my pruning tool between plants. Some people that have really bad disease pressure will actually sanitize between cuts. I just do it between individual plants. The best thing to use is probably a diluted bleach solution. I didn't have any of that, so I'm using a natural disinfectant that's made with 
time. But that's basically helping to stop, if you have dis active disease going on, stopping that spread. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this wonky branch. I wanna go completely flush, or as flush as I can with the other branch and snip that guy off of there. And so the next step is, as I mentioned, just to clear out anything that is on or near touching the ground because some diseases are actually spread from spore splash up from rainwater hitting the ground and bouncing up on the plants. So this is a relatively easy way to avoid those types of pathogens. And it just kind of depends on the mood I am as to how heavy or lightly I prune these guys. Some days I get really aggressive and some days I don't do much. Now I will say, as I mentioned, my, my motto is kind of less is more pruning. That is not just because I hate pruning tomatoes. I've also found that in our growing climate that if you get overly aggressive on the pruning, it can lead to sun scald on the plants. Um, we get a lot of intense sun in the summer, especially when tomatoes are ripening up and without a little shade protection from this foliage cover, they do tend to get sun scald. So you can see now, just with those few snips, how much more this opens this up. It's gonna allow more air circulation of the plant. I don't have any branches or leaves touching the ground. So overall, this plant's gonna be, have more of a chance to stay healthy longer into the season. Now I'm gonna do these other three right quick here and show you kind of the before and afters. Now I'll come back through usually I, once a week or so if I'm really staying on top of it and just weave in any limbs that have escaped or grown excessively and kind of tie up anything and prune anything that's gotten out of hand. But really it's just a few minutes once a week to keep the plants in check. Now there are certainly situations where you can grow your tomatoes without even fussing with pruning or training or doing any of this. But for ease of picking, for disease prevention, for healthy plants, all of those benefits, I really prefer this method. And I will say one of the kind of unexpected benefits of working this closely with my tomato plants is that often I can spot little problems before they become big problems. So I can't tell you the number of like tomato hornworms, tobacco hornworms, um, army worms that I've found on these plants when they're tiny before they do a lot of damage just because I'm in the plants working with them and I can spot these things. One last thing I will say is you'll see a lot of people mentioning suckers that you should trim those off. Certainly, if you come across them, trim them off. There's really no reason not to. They're just gonna take energy away from the plant. But I, I don't find that you have to get like super paranoid about finding every last sucker and getting rid of them to, to have a good yield on healthy plants. So that's it. That's really my process for pruning and training or trellising indeterminate tomatoes. If you have any additional tips or have any suggestions from me, I'd love to hear them. I'm always learning and I always love to hear what other people are doing. And if you find content like this helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.